Wow, I haven't held a camera and vlogged like this in so long. I mean, how long has it been? It's been, I think since April. And back then I was on a ship. Wow, okay, so last time I was vlogging, I was working on a cruise ship and I was stuck in the middle of Australia. Wow, well, off the coast of Australia. Anyway, not the point. The point is so much has happened and I felt like I really needed to start vlogging again and talking about this, well, there's a lot to cover. First off, to all of you new subscribers, hi, welcome to the channel. I make a bunch of tutorials and videos about texture and material making for 3D art and using Substance Designer and all that kind of stuff. So thank you so much for subscribing. And yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm ending a video right now, but I really should be starting one. So I kind of wanted to pick up the camera and sort of show you a little bit about what's going on here. And uh, that first kind of starts off with this space. Um, if you can't tell, we like plants. And uh, that's partially because, well, my girlfriend, Charlotte, works for a couple plant companies where she does social media, blog posts, and Instagram for indoor house plants. And so basically this room is surrounded by plants. So much so, but you know, we're making it work and we're getting great oxygen, especially because we have to be indoors a lot more these days. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty good and it's, it's a great aesthetic and it's very inspiring. Lots of plants. We've especially got plants in the workplace and I did want to do a quick little shot of my desk, but I'm going to hold off on showing too much of the desk because I just ordered some things to improve the workspace and improve my workflow and everything, which I'm going to show later. So I'm going to do another video of my workspace and everything that I use later on. But yeah, like I said, plants. I also wanted to talk a little bit about who I am. So I'm Jeremy and I'm a freelance texture and material artist where I specialize in procedural texture generation, mainly with Substance Designer, but I also use Substance Painter and, and Photoshop and many other tools. I also did a lot of um, 3D generalist training in Cinema 4D and a lot of other programs. And so here we are making videos, making content so that you guys can learn more and we can all learn more together. All that jazz. So whenever I was watching a video, I never quite understood why people would have this sort of setup. Like I never liked having, in all of my previous videos, I've never had the microphone in the shot. So that, you know, it just seemed like it was much more staged. It was much more, you know, it wasn't as realistic, it wasn't as personable. But, you know, the other day I was watching a tutorial on YouTube and funnily enough, it was about Adobe InDesign because they were, I'm starting to do some print work and, and working with that kind of space. And on the person's channel, all of his videos, whenever he was talking to the camera or he was talking about whether it could have been a vlog or, or whenever he was talking to the camera during the tutorial, the, the microphone was in the shot and I noticed that I started noticing it less and less. And this is a, this is extremely helpful for me because whenever I'm, whenever I'm recording my screen capture for my tutorials, I always use the microphone. But whenever I'm talking to the camera like this, I'm relying on the camera's built-in audio. And the difference is quite staggering. In fact, I have the camera pretty far away because I want to get that depth of field while I'm recording. And so now to get better audio, I think I'm finally just gonna bite the bullet and record <laughs> with the microphone like this because the rule of audio is the closer you are to the microphone, the better the sound you're gonna get. All of this to say, I wanna tell you about a major issue I was having with Substance Designer, the Substance plugin, and integrating it into another program like Cinema 4D. So I'm working on this project for a client and I noticed this snag that I was having when publishing the designer graph to an SBSAR file to use in other programs. One of the amazing things about Substance Designer is that you can create these tools, these published graphs that allow you to have uh, parameters that you can adjust and create a dynamic texture instead of just a static bunch of maps, which again, could be useful for other reasons. But for me, this particular project required something that you could change and adjust. So one of the ways you can preview the SBSAR file that you're working with, along with all the parameters, is to open it in an app called Substance Player. Substance Player is like a preview or first party substance app where you can 
open up your published graphs and then tweak the parameters and export into static maps if you'd like to. So when I opened up this graph into Substance Player, I noticed everything was fine. But when I was importing the graph into Cinema 4D, hit render, it looked completely out of whack. It looked completely different. I was missing major points to the graph. The tiles were wrong. The colors were off and I was getting this majorly blown out, pixelated version of what I originally thought was going to be my texture. So what did I do? Well, the first thing I tried was adjusting my parameters within Cinema 4D by adjusting those published sliders that I created in Substance Designer. So I had seen issues like this before with the tile sampler, how it wasn't really translating from Substance Designer or Substance Player into a third party with the plugin. The scale of the tiles seemed to be coming out smaller than I had originally set. So I tried bypassing the tile sampler, but I was getting the same issue. At the same time, the fine folks at Substance at Adobe had tweeted me because I had initially sent out a cry for help on Twitter. I was like, ah, I don't know what's going on. I think there's a problem with my tile sampler. Has anyone else experienced this issue where it's not really translating in other programs like Cinema 4D? So they tweeted back to me, thank you guys at Substance and Adobe, and they had initially said, well, are you using the CPU engine or the GPU? And so initially I thought, well, here, here's how I have Cinema 4D set up. So Cinema 4D has a, a CPU-based render engine, which is physical or, or standard. And then I also have a GPU-based render engine called Redshift. I also use Octane from time to time. And so initially I thought, oh, they're asking me about the render engine. They weren't talking about the render engine they were talking about the substance engine. So after going through my graph stage by stage, node by node and publishing as I went, I figured out that the problem was with the flood fill nodes. Google didn't seem to have an answer when it came to searching for an issue with the tile sampler, but there was something I found about flood fill. It doesn't work with the old substance engine. Well, Clearly, I thought that Cinema would ship with using the latest version of the Substance Engine set by default with the built-in plugin that they created, right? Wrong. If you're having issues where substances are coming out differently in your 3D package through the plugin, here's a quick fix. Okay, so here we are in Substance Player. This is the first party Substance preview app I was telling you about. And here is the material that I'm working on. This is the one that was giving me some trouble. And uh, you can see it's this fitted stone wall texture. It has a bunch of parameters here. You can see I can increase the space between the rocks and I can also change the scale of the rocks um, as well as uh, randomly move them around and change how many rocks there are on the X and the Y, all kinds of stuff like this. And so I just wanted to give you an idea of what I was looking for when I was first exporting this material into Cinema 4D. So now let's head over to Cinema 4D. And so here we are in Cinema 4D and I've got this layout where I've got my Redshift GPU engine preview here on the right, my main viewport here on the left, and I've already created this material here. And if you wanna learn how to create a material in Redshift that automatically hooks up to this substance file, using the plugin. I created a video, it's up here in the top right, or you can also look down in the description below for that link. And so it's all hooked up to Cinema 4D's built-in Substance plugin options. So if I go into the Substance Asset Manager, which I have docked here on my screen, but if you wanna bring that up, go to Pipeline, Substance Engine, Substance Asset Manager. And this is where all of your substances are located. And I have one imported here. It's that same file. And you can see if I scroll down here, we've got the same parameters that I had exposed in Substance Designer and also visible in Substance Player. So as you can see, the main issue is this looks nothing like what I was seeing in the previous application. So to fix that, what you have to do is you have to go into your the Substance Asset Manager that I mentioned before, and we're gonna go into the Preferences. Now this takes me into Cinema 4D's main preferences under the Substance Engine tab. And depending on which program you're using, I wanna stress that look for settings like this in your programs, whether it's 3ds Max or Maya or Blender, and you're gonna find the Substance Engine settings. So right away you can see this option here called Switch Substance Engine, and this is where we make the fix. So running in Cinema 4D, we have the SSE2 original Substance Engine here, and if we click on that, we've got some options here. Now you might see something different if you're using a Mac, but with a PC, we've got Direct3D 
in SSE2. What you want to do is you want to change this to Direct3D10. I chose Direct3D10. It doesn't seem to be working in Direct3D11, and I'm not sure why, so I'm going to stick with what works, Direct3D10. Now, it says engine change pending, so what I'm going to have to do is restart Cinema 4D. Okay, so I've restarted Cinema 4D, and now what I'm going to do is right-click on my substance here in the Substance Asset Manager, and I'm going to hit Reload Substances. You see that now that it's finished processing these textures, we've gotten our substance here working in Redshift. So what I could do is I can go into my object tag, bring up the displacement here, something like five by five here, and then I can rotate around a little bit. And you can see everything is working with the displacement, tessellation, and all the shapes are here. So it seems that the Flatville nodes are not compatible with the original Substance Engine, hence why it wasn't processing them correctly and the results coming out all crazy. I hope that this fixes any issues that you're having. I know this one made my head spin for quite a while. Well, there you have it everyone. A major issue that I was having and I'm so happy I figured it out. Also, with that GPU engine now being in place, Substance did say that you're going to see a bump in speed improvements as well. So that performance is going to increase and all your nodes are going to work. So I really hope that uh, that helps you out. If you want to see more videos like these or some more in-depth tutorials where I go from beginning to end, how to create many different kinds of textures, be sure to hit that like button and hit subscribe, as well as the bell to be notified when I post new videos. And we have a lot of awesome training coming up, including some really cool premium tutorials that are going to go super in-depth, and I can't wait to show you my first premium training series. Anyway, that's all coming up soon, and so uh, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.